everyone, my name is Riley and I am a junior dance major at Sam Houston State University. And um, today in this video, I just wanted to share with you guys some advice if you are looking to start college in the future and dance at college, or if you are currently in college, this will also be beneficial to you as well. So today I have a little list of five different things that are I think have been beneficial for me and I feel like will be beneficial to, to um, anyone who's looking to participate in dance um, while while also getting their college education. So the number one thing on my list is to be open to schools. The school that I'm currently at, I definitely did not expect I was going to be at initially. Um, I didn't have any specific schools in mind either when I was auditioning for college. I really just started auditioning knowing that I wanted to be a dance major. I wanted to pursue this. This is what I wanted to do. And so I applied for a lot of different places. And I think this audition for this school was my very last audition. But when I finally did it, I really liked the school's atmosphere and I got to tour it. I also had some alumni from my studio who have also graduated from the school. And because of that, I was able to learn a little bit more about the department and learn a little bit more about the campus and the community. And since my home is pretty close to the actual campus, I was able to audition in person and get a really good sense of the dance community and the campus, especially after touring the campus. And then after I had auditioned, I had heard back and I had ended up not only getting into the department, but also getting a scholarship. And so I'd say just be open, you know? I auditioned for a couple schools that had a strictly like ballet track in their dance um, curriculum. And that's really what I wanted to do. I thought that I wanted to be, you know, purely, or join a classical company um, once I graduated college. But going to this school has been really good for me in terms of learning um, just the diversity in different people's training and having that kind of fuel me has been able to help me um, gain a better sense of my training and my style and what works for me and what doesn't because I've been able to have so much other different interactions um, with people in a different kind of dance world. And I think in that sense, being around so many different dancers that have different backgrounds from mine and that like to dance differently is just really inspiring and again, has been really beneficial to my own personal growth. And again, you never know what could be offered out of it because um, you could definitely audition for a dance program, but not like the school or really like the school, but you don't like the dance program. So yes, just be open to different places, to different departments, do your research and audition in person if you can. I know that's a lot harder now with COVID and restrictions, but try to get as much info as you can. See if you can reach out to alumni, see if you can um, see, look on the department's websites, if they have any like open performances or live streams that are available to the public, definitely do that and see if you can get a good glimpse of what you are stepping into. My second thing on my list is to make friends with other dance majors. Now for me in my freshman year, my class, we basically were friends from the jump. Like we did everything together. We went to the dining halls, we had movie nights, we like would go into each other's dorms and just hang out. Um, so I'd say if you can, there's usually going to be like beginning of the school year meetings. They have those at my school for sure. I would definitely say while you're at those meetings, take the time to introduce yourself and to let other people know like where you're from or like what your other hobbies are so that you can connect outside of that. See if you can find other dance majors on social media. I know a lot of departments have a like Facebook page or an Instagram page. And if you like go through the followers list, you could probably find um, people who are also in your class. And then once you go through the list, you could DM them and just reach out to them and say like, hey, I'm also in your class, it's nice to meet you, my name is blah, blah, blah. And so that's a good way to kind of connect prior to the school year, so then you already kind of have a buddy. Then once you have your buddy group, you can ask if you wanna go walk to the dining halls and have a little lunch date, or if you want to walk to your dance classes together, walk to rehearsals together. Um, that way you have like a nice little community built up. And then the other thing is to talk to upperclassmen because 
those people will definitely be beneficial to you as you continue to grow through the department because you kind of have somebody who's been in your shoes already and who is more accessible than kind of like the professors. It can be a little intimidating or scary to go straight up to the professors and ask them for like personal advice or things that they might not relate to, of course, because they're professors. So to have just like a student who is maybe a couple years older than you or even in the next class above you, that can be really beneficial and really helpful. So when you get the chance, introduce yourself to upperclassmen and make friends with them because that'll be really beneficial and then once they graduate you'll have some friends who are already like in the dance workforce who might want to reach out to you you never know and so these next two points kind of go together number three is take as many opportunities as you can and number four is don't forget you are a person first before you are a dancer. Being a freshman, in my department, we definitely had a lot of opportunities to perform work. We got to audition for every show um, as soon as we joined um, the department. There also were masterclass opportunities sprinkled within the um, semester. And we even have shows for undergrads to perform their work and showcase their work. So there were a good amount of opportunities for incoming freshmen whereas in other departments sometimes they have you wait a year um but either way coming into a, a new environment as a freshman in college for some people can be hard because you just graduated from like your high school and your home studio and you were you know the senior there top of the class and then to come back and kind of have to restart uh gain your footing in a new location in a new environment and having like these upperclassmen and advanced dancers ahead of you can be can be kind of overwhelming and a little bit intimidating at first and you may not even get casted but with that being said like take the opportunities that you do have seriously like you're here to learn um first and foremost and so take advantage of all the opportunities you can if there's a master class do that if there is opportunity to work with another professor do that our grad students in our department at the end of the year they have their finals which they'll have open to anyone who's available in the department if there's something like that at your school definitely reach out to somebody and ask to be a part of their projects put your choreography out there if you have opportunities to showcase your work and to showcase your skill especially if you're in a really big department it might be a lot harder to see you if you're in a big, bigger department so getting yourself out there and your voice out there is gonna be beneficial so that more people will see you and wanna work with you and wanna showcase you. But with all that being said, take as many opportunities as you can fit into your schedule. Don't forget that you do have academic classes, you do have your classes for your minors, if you have a minor. And like you're at college, you get to enjoy this like adolescent transitional period before you enter into like the workforce and you become more of an independent adult. You don't want to spend your whole time in college just constantly training, training, training and constantly just being at the studio and only dancing and only doing what your major is because you're so much more than that. You are a human being with other interests and other talents and who has a good heart and who is a friend and a daughter or a cousin or whatever. And like you have other interactions and other opportunities and an other life to live outside of just dance. And so I just think that's really important for a lot of people to know that like, especially since um, the performing arts right now, it's kind of taking a, a hit, especially with COVID, that can be very disheartening for a lot of dancers to hear and, and thinking about their future careers in the arts can be tough. When you spent years and years and years training and pouring into this, and of course, training and putting forth the effort is definitely something you wanna keep up. If this is something you love, of course you're going to college for it, like do it, of course. But never forget that you are a human being and that it's okay to rest. It's okay to go to a party safely. <laughs> it's okay to want to go and hang out with friends. It's okay to want to not be going to the gym like right after class every day. Like those things are okay. And it's okay to want to have other hobbies and dedicate your time outside of dance. And I just want to make sure that people 
know that, that we are more than just these like dance robots and that we have life experiences and should be able to enjoy that as much as we can. So that was number three and four. Lastly, I have number five, which is to set goals. So for me, setting dance related goals has always been kind of hard because I, I've always made like a good overall general goal. Like, yes, I want to improve X, Y, Z, but I never really knew how to implement the daily step by steps, the smaller steps to get to the big thing. I had always would work super hard to do something and then I would burn out. And so rather than taking the little bit of steps um, consistently to get to the overall thing that I want to achieve. And so one of the Instagram accounts that I follow, the Dance Resource Podcast, um, they also have a YouTube channel as well where they talk about how to set dance goals for the year. And so I watched that video and it was so helpful and it really helped me to just narrow down how I want to go about my year so that I can reach my overall goal by the end of the year and helping me to build a routine that I'm not going to burn out from, but I can still work on consistently and I will be able to see growth. And so that's what I'm going to go over with you guys, my goal list for 2021. So watching the video that they put on the Dance Resource podcast, it's really simple of an outline and it doesn't sound like it's that much, but honestly, it was so helpful getting me organized and really helping me to gradually funnel in and narrow down my goals from the big broad thing to individual smaller, um, smaller factions of the year. So how it goes is that you have your overall goal for the year and then you take how you want to achieve that overall goal. You split that into quarters. And so how I split my quarters up is because I'm still in school. I naturally have kind of my year split into quarters, which is the spring semester, the summer break, the fall semester and then winter break. So that's how I split my quarters up. And then you want to put an individual goal for each quarter that leads you to your overall big goal. Then once you have your quarters, you split your quarters down into months. And I basically just kind of did a rough estimate of what the spring, summer, fall, and winter um, semesters and breaks look like for me. And then from your months, you wanna split down into weeks. And that's more of the really detailed examples of what you're going to do to, again, get to that overall big goal. And so for me, I'm going to go over my list for the year. This one's kind of, this one's the rough draft. I have my nice one in my planner, but I'm going to go over what I have. So for me, my overall goal for the year was to improve my overall body performance or my body's overall performance i really feel like for me personally that my body is at a place where it really can just push a little bit further in terms of reaching its full potential you know i might not have maybe the highest legs in the class but i want to be able to work at my highest i may not be the most flexible but i want to be able to work at my maximum so i really want to work on improving my body's overall performance and so how i split that up into my quarters again i did spring semester summer fall semester and then winter break and my goals for each quarter i had for the first quarter was going to be improving my assets so the skills that i already have my strengths that i feel like i have for me that is my back i feel like my back is pretty flexible and is an asset of mine and so I wanted to use this first quarter as me strengthening my back and my core. So all of this around here. And so strengthening my core and building up endurance is something that I also really want to work on improving. Um, a dancer that I really admire and look up to is, her name is Justice Moore. She is a ensemble dancer in the Broadway production of Hamilton. And she posted on her Instagram a while ago, it was about two years ago, that she does a five minute plank series before every show um, that she has kind of built up to in order to help her stamina through the show. And so 
I wanted to make it a goal to be able to have learned and gotten through that entire five minute plank series by the end of this year. So I'm going to be doing that gradually throughout each quarter, as well as focusing on a different section of the body. So again, for the first quarter, I said improving my skill assets. Um, that means my back and my core. And then for the second quarter, I was going to focus on another part of the body while working on building up to that five minute plank series. Quarter three, again, a different area of the body progressing through the plank series. And then quarter four was work on applying those new skills. So that could be to work on maybe a new trick that I wanted to do or trying out uh, a new class that I could apply that in. Maybe that means aerial, maybe that means tumbling, maybe that means um, just something else that I could use my strengths and my assets that I've developed through this year, I can apply them. And so how I have my quarters is, it's kind of a rough estimate, but I have it January, February, March, April, March, June, July, August, September, October, and then November, December. And of course, like it's not as stagnant of a line between each quarter. They'll kind of blend and whatever, but that's kind of the general overview. But my first quarter will basically be these first four months of the year. And so what I have of my first quarter when you break it down into the months, how I want to progress through the month. For me, since I'm working on my back and progressing through the plank series, how I'm gonna start it is in January, starting today for these next three weeks of January, I'm going to do Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, working on exercising to a back strengthening video on YouTube. And then after I make it through that video, doing a one minute plank to end it. And so I'll be doing that for the next three days of this week. And then the next week, I will switch to a different back strengthening video on YouTube, but still continuing that plank. Third week, we switch out another video and still on the same plank. So then as I progress through each month of this quarter, I would keep that same layout of doing a back strengthening video on YouTube and following along with that, but I would just add more time to my plank. So February, we do the videos, switch out each week and then now we bump it up to a minute and 20 second plank and then march same thing we bump it up to a minute 40. april same thing and then now we're at two minutes on planks and so that's how i have my first quarter split up and then of course as it comes close to the end of the quarter you work on, okay, what's the next area I wanna work on next? Maybe it's working on my arms. And so maybe I do the same type of layout. I do an arm exercising video Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. And then after I do my arms, I go and do my two minute plank and whatever's next. I think the next part is side planks after that in the circuit. And so that's what I have for my um, goals. And I think setting goals for the school year is just gonna be really beneficial in order to help you, again, make the most out of what you have. I know for a lot of departments, we're not able to come in class every day in person or even rehearse every day in person. And so when you really are taking the time to be proactive in what you can do and working on just improving yourself uh, as much as you can, that's really going to help you out in the long run, especially, you know, you start this as a freshman coming into school. By the time you're a senior, you're gonna have a really good sense of your strengths and being able to be really independent and have that agency over your dancing and over your body. And so that'll really help you once you enter the professional like working world and be able to keep yourself um, in shape and toned and being able to have that sense of personal responsibility with your self and with your instrument as you progress into the professional work world. And so I just wanna say thank you so much to everyone who watched. I hope that this video was beneficial to you guys. I also wanna say thank you so much to Gabby for asking me to be a part of this project. I think that this is so wonderful, what is going on here. And I just wanna wish you guys all a happy and healthy and safe and fun new year. And good luck on all your goals, good luck on picking schools, and just good luck on your future. And that's it. Bye y'all.
Thank you.